Hey, good morning, my friends. How are you doing? It's Pastor Adam here with you in January. I hope your new year is starting okay. Uh, still got a little darkness out there, but it's it's going to get brighter here because it's Alaska. So uh, let's pray. And we're going to start a brand new series today, which I will tell you about in just a minute. Uh, but let's pray first. Uh, Lord Jesus, uh, thanks for all my friends and all the families watching today. Help me to teach clearly and help us to grow uh, in our discipleship of you and our following of you. For your glory, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, well, hopefully you guys have been with us for many of the weeks when we've been doing our big picture of the Bible. That series is all over. If you can believe it, you guys have gone through the whole Bible uh, and hopefully have an idea of the big picture. Uh, so I thought for our next series, this one will be a lot shorter, maybe only eight weeks or something like that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about how you and I and your brother and mother and all those folks, uh, mom and dad, fit into the big picture uh, story of the Bible. Uh, if you remember, uh, we said that when Jesus um, rescued the world, he didn't just bring things to an end right away, but he said to his disciples and to us that we we're supposed to have a job to do. We're going to be witnesses for him, telling people what we have seen and heard about Jesus, and uh, we're going to go make disciples of other people. And so our, our new uh, kind of uh, class that we're doing here is going to be called Discipleship, because uh, in order to make disciples, we have to be disciples, right? Uh, if you remember, a disciple is someone who's like a student or a learner, and we are all students and learners and followers of Jesus, learning to live more like him and treat others like he did and tell others about him. Uh, and we grow in that. Uh, so I, kind of the, the picture I want to give you here, this is fun. This is from Christmas here. Ugh, you guys know what this is? This is a heavy little beast called a hoverboard. Okay, so this is my daughter Kate's hoverboard. This is her Christmas gift this year. Let me tell you, it is really heavy. It's like I could do, oh, get some muscles going here. This thing's like, I don't even know how many pounds this is. It's at least 20 pounds, I'm thinking. Uh, a beast of a hoverboard. Now, if you uh, have ever tried to ride one of these, you know it's not easy at first unless you're just like a genius with these kinds of things. Uh, but it takes time to learn. And if you're going to uh, teach other people how to ride a hoverboard, uh, you got to learn how to do it first yourself, right? Uh, you don't want someone to try to teach you how to hoverboard who's never hoverboarded before because they're not going to know what they're doing and you're not going to know what you're doing. But if you maybe go to someone's house and they have a hoverboard and they say, hey, try this and this trick helps me, that helps someone to teach other people how to hoverboard. The same way as disciples of Christ, we grow in our own walk with God so that we can make other disciples for Christ and help them to walk with God. So that's what our, our new class is going to be called Discipleship. Uh, just a quick note to parents. If you're interested in additional materials for the next eight weeks or so, uh, this discipleship course is based on a, a class we do here. We call it Rooted, but uh, this, uh, the book is actually called Partners One-on-One -on -one Discipleship. It's by Mike Fabara. It's a really uh, good materials about discipleship. You can, I will give these to you, one per family. Uh, if you are interested, just let me know uh, as supplies last and some just great scriptures to go over uh, as a family. A lot of additional questions and studies, uh, but we're going to talk about some basic uh, pieces of discipleship, like how to read your Bible better, how to have a great prayer life, uh, how to serve others, those kinds of things. But today I want us to focus on three questions that will get us started uh, in our discipleship here, okay? And those three questions are, ready, drum roll. Our three questions we're gonna deal with today is, what is a Christian? Because a Christian is kind of like another word for disciple. How does someone become a Christian? And how do I know that I really am a Christian? Maybe, maybe I'm not, how do I know? So those are our three questions. What is a Christian? How does someone become a Christian? And how do I really know that I am a Christian? Okay, so let's uh, take those three questions and that will be our topic for today. We'll, we'll look at a few verses as we go through this. So um, uh, in good old tradition, I'm gonna give you my best freezy face here, uh, or at least one of my best freezy faces, because uh, I have a question I want to, you to try to answer before we even talk about it here. Uh, you probably know this just from living life a little bit, but let's say that you have a very inquisitive friend and you say to your friend, oh, oh yes, well, uh, I'm a Christian. And your friend goes, a Christian? What is a Christian anyways? 
how would you answer your friend? Their question is, is what is a Christian? So I'll give you my freezing face. I'll do it with the hoverboard. I'll do it like a bow tie. Okay, so answer the question, what is a Christian? Go. That's great. I need a hoverboard for all my freezing faces, right? Um, well, let's talk about the, the answer to that. Hopefully you got to, to pause the video for a minute or two and talk about what a Christian is. Um, I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to give you a true false test. This is a little bit review because we've talked about some of these questions before here. So um, true or false, a Christian is someone who goes to church a lot. So if you go to church a lot, you are a Christian. True or false? False, right? Now, pretty often if we're disciples of Jesus, if we are Christians, we probably do go to church a lot. But that doesn't make someone a Christian. There are people who are forced to go to church by their family members, their mom or dad, or if they're married by their spouse, or they might go because they like the free coffee or donuts. We don't really give free donuts, but we should give free donuts, I think. Anyway, uh, but they might go to church for a variety of reasons. So going to church a lot does not make you a Christian. Um, question number two, a Christian is someone who has a mom or dad who's a Christian. True or false? False. Okay. Um, if you're a Christian, maybe your mom or dad is Christian. If you're not a Christian, if you're a Christian, they might be Christian, they might not be Christian. It, it really is going to, we're going to see it depends on something that relates to you, your decision, uh, not your mom's decision, not your dad's decision, not your uncle's decision, uh, not your family's decision. This is something between you and God, and we'll focus on that in a minute here. Okay, true or false, a Christian is someone who finishes their Awana book by memorizing lots of Bible verses and gets a trophy for memorizing Bible verses. That's what makes someone a Christian, Bible verse memory. True or false? False, okay. Uh, you could uh, memorize a lot of recipes out of uh, a cookbook, but that doesn't make you a chef, right? Uh, you could memorize a lot of video game secrets because you read some video game books or whatever, but that doesn't mean you're any good at the video game. Same way, memorizing a bunch of verses in the Bible, it's a great thing, and as a Christian, you might do that, but that doesn't make someone a Christian or not. Okay, next one. True or false? A Christian is someone who does just a lot of good things. So if you do a lot of good things, you are a Christian. True or false? False. Okay. There's people who don't believe in Jesus at all. Some people don't believe in any God at all. Some people believe in other gods. And they might be kind to other people in certain circumstances, or they might, you know, do nice things for other people. Doing good things doesn't make you a Christian. And as a Christian, you will do good things, but that doesn't make you a Christian. Okay, we're getting closer here. Only a few more questions. A Christian is someone who never does any bad things. So you, a Christian is basically someone who is perfect. Whoa! You get the halo. Here's the halo over my head, right? True or false? False. You better believe it. If only perfect people were Christians, no one will be a Christian because none of us are perfect, right? For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That means that none of us is perfect. None of us uh, hits the bullseye every time with everything that God wants us to do. So being perfect or never doing anything wrong doesn't make us a Christian. Okay, almost last one. Uh, true or false? A Christian is someone who wears a cross as a necklace or on their earrings. False. Okay, that's not true either. Just wearing a t-shirt or uh, necklaces or whatever doesn't make you a Christian. Well, you're saying, Pastor Adam, those were all false. None of those things made you Christian. What makes you a Christian? Ah, uh, it has to do with uh, what we believe, but really it's about our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, a Christian is someone who knows Jesus, not just knows about Jesus, Someone who knows him, like in a relationship, and someone who is known by him, okay? So I'm not talking like you might know uh, some famous singer, I don't even know who's popular these days, Taylor Swift. She's probably not even popular anymore. You might know of someone, but that's not the same as knowing your mom or your dad or your brother, someone that you have a relationship with. So to be a Christian, you know God in a relationship and are known by him. Uh, let's look at a few verses that talk about this, okay? This is um, one of our first verses. This is from Matthew's Gospel. Uh, it's the Sermon on the Mount, if you remember that. This is Jesus teaching his people uh, about what it's like to be in the kingdom of God. And this is one thing that Jesus says to them. Uh, kind of is uh, a little bit of a warning, okay? This is at the end of the, uh, his, his speech to them. And he says, 
This is Jesus talking. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who's in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, this is judgment day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? So look at all the things they claim to do. Then, Jesus says, I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. Okay, this is kind of a, a scary verse to think about here, but Jesus is talking to the crowds and he's saying a lot of people are going to say to him on the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, look at all the stuff we did. We drove out demons. We performed miracles. Of course we're Christians. And Jesus says, well, on one hand, you didn't do the will of my Father in heaven. But he says, I never knew you. I don't have a relationship with you, right? Okay. So this is one verse that shows us that to be a disciple, to be a Christian, is to have this relationship with Jesus. Um, here's another one. Uh, this is, again, Jesus talking. This is in John's Gospel. And he kind of gives a word picture um, uh, of a shepherd and sheep. Okay, And Jesus says this to the people following. He says, he says about himself, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Okay, I don't have any sheep. I have a schnauzer, but uh, I know my schnauzer, and my schnauzer knows me. He knows my voice. I know what he sounds like. We're around each other all the time. We go on walks together. I feed the dog. Okay. Um, and then he says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. So there's, there's a little bit of obedience there too. And they follow me. But again, the point I want to make here is someone who's a disciple, someone who's a Christian, is someone who has this relationship with Jesus. It's not just knowing about him. It's actually knowing him. Okay. Uh, one last verse here this is another word picture from jesus uh and it's it's in the book of john and he gives a picture of a grapevine um i don't know if you've ever seen a grapevine uh, but this is what he says this is jesus says i'm the vine you are the branches so what he means here is he's like the main trunk of the grapevine and he says his disciples are like the little branches that come off the main vine and that produce the grapes right he says if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. He's basically saying if these little branches stay attached to the main, uh, you know, trunk of the vine, they're going to produce grapes, right? Apart from me, you can do nothing. And again, this is like being connected to Jesus, if you can put it that way. It's not just like uh, you're near Jesus or you see him from afar, but you're connected to him in a way that the life that comes through him as the tree trunk goes through your life and then you produce fruit, okay? So that is uh, what a Christian is. A Christian is someone who knows Jesus, not just knows about him, and is known by him, okay? That's question number one. Question number two, your friend hears all this. And they say, oh, I see. Your friend asks you then, well, how do I become a Christian? Okay, I'll give you another freezy face, and you got to answer this one. And this is a little bit of review because we've actually talked about this before. Uh, your friend, uh, you know, if, if you realize that uh, being a Christian is having a right relationship with Jesus, with God the Father, how do you get a right relationship? It's not a broken relationship. It's a fixed relationship. So how does that happen? How does someone become a Christian? So I'll give you my freezy face. Talk for a minute or two or three. And then come back. Ready, go. Okay, I held my freezy face there for a long time. Uh, okay, again, uh, this is this is review for you guys. We talked about this eh, maybe a month ago, but this is how you become a Christian. It's not by buying Christian T-shirts or going to Awana or going to church or anything like that. Uh, it starts up here, uh, but then it kind of goes down into your heart and is lived out through your life, right? So uh, to become a Christian, you have to understand a certain message that's in the Bible about Jesus, okay? You have, that's the first part. That's not everything. And the message is basically that we have a broken relationship with God, and to fix it, Jesus died as our substitute. Remember, we talked about the sacrificial lamb. Uh, Jesus got punished for the bad things that we have done and do, and he took that punishment so that our relationship with God can be fixed. He died on the cross, and he rose again from the dead. So that's the starting point. You have to hear that message, 
Jesus died as my substitute. And you have to understand it. Okay, that's part one. But here's the thing. Uh, even the demons understand that. They know that Jesus died for people, but it doesn't help them at all. And the reason why is it can't just stay up here in your head. It has to sink down here into your heart and then be lived out through your life. Uh, the second part, it's not just understanding the message, Jesus died as my substitute, but it comes down to your heart when you do two things. You repent and you believe. I'll say this too again. You repent and you believe. Now, repent is not a word people use a whole lot, uh, but what it means is it means that you change your mind. And if you were with us for our Bible series, uh, the big picture of the Bible, the, the kind of mind change that you have when you repent is you stop deciding to be your own boss and you're saying, God, you know what? That's not working out so well. I don't want to be like Bob the Builder and can I fix it? Yes, I can. I want you to be my boss, okay? Uh, repentance, I said before, is like it's like a marching term. You're a soldier, you're marching. Do, 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 going this way and they say, repent! And you do an about face and you go the other way, right? So that's really the picture of it is, is all of us are going away from God in our own inclination, right? We want to go this way. We say, I want to be my boss and go that way. But when we repent, we say, uh, maybe I shouldn't go that way. Okay, God, I'll let you be boss. I want you to be boss. I'll turn around and go that way. Okay, that's the demons don't do that. They don't want God to be boss still. So that's part one. So we understand it. We repent. We turn around. And then we put our faith or we put our trust in Jesus as our substitute. Uh, and we talked about this a little bit. I used the chair analogy. I said, uh, it's kind of like you can say, well, I, yeah, I believe that chair will hold me up, but if I don't sit in it, I'm not putting my trust in it. But if I say, I believe it'll hold me up and, oh, yes, I trust in what he did for me. It's not just I say it, but I live it out, okay? Uh, so that's a big part of it. It's kind of like a roller coaster ride. If you're, there's a roller coaster and you say, yes, I believe I can ride that roller coaster and not die. Okay. But if you never get on the roller coaster, you're not really putting your faith or your trust in it. You have to get into the roller coaster, so to speak, uh, strap on your, your shoulder harnesses or seat belts or whatever, and ride the roller coaster. And that's, that's what it is. It's this trust. So this is how you become a Christian. You understand the message. What's the message? Jesus died as my substitute and rose again from the dead. And then you repent. You turn around and say, I don't want to be my own boss. I want God to be my boss. And then you put your trust in what Jesus did for you. You say, okay, I trust that you did die for me uh, and you rose again from the dead. And you live in light of that. Okay, that's your second question. Last one here. Uh, I'll go kind of uh, quick here on this one. Last freezy face. Let's say your says, okay, okay, okay. I know what a Christian is. I know how you become a Christian and I actually believe those things. I understand the message and I want him to be God to be my boss uh, and I put my trust in him. But how do I know it really worked? How do I know that I really am a Christian? Um, well, the Bible, oh, I don't have a freezy face for this one. I, I said it was a freezy face. Oh, I'm not giving you a freezy face. I'm just going to talk. Ha ah. um, Well, the Bible tells us that there's one other way that we can tell if we are really following Jesus as his disciples or not. And the answer to that is fruit. Fruit, like at Fred Meyer? Well, kind of. Um, I'll, again, I'll go to this verse here. This is Jesus talking. Um, and he's talking, this is again in Matthew's gospel. And he says, he gives another word picture. He says, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. So he's saying, how do you tell what kind of tree something is? He says, look at the fruit. If you want to know what kind of tree it is, look at what kind of fruit it produces. Then, thus by their fruit, you will recognize them, okay? So Jesus gives this picture of, you can tell uh, if someone is really a disciple by the fruit that comes out of their life. Now, the fruit doesn't save them, right? Because we already talked about here in John, this is the whole vine thing. He says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. Uh, if a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. He's saying, if you are a Christian... Because you are connected to the, the tree trunk, you're going to produce grapes. The grapes don't make you part of the vine. The vine helps you to make the fruit. And it's the same way. Um, Christians will do a lot of good things, a lot of good deeds. They'll be kind to other people. Uh, fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, uh, patience, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. I might have said those out of order. Sorry. Um but these kinds of things will come in our life, but those things don't make us right with God. 
They are a result of when we become Christians and disciples for him. Um, and you say, okay, so I look at the fruit of my life, if good things are happening in my life. But Pastor Adam, I don't want to tell you this, but I still sin. Sometimes I have bad words towards people or bad thoughts or bad actions. Sometimes I even push my little sister, right? Okay, well, do you know something? I'm the same way too, and so is every other Christian. Just because you sin doesn't mean you're not a Christian. Um, think of it this way, okay? We talked about discipleship being like writing a hoverboard. Ugh, this thing's heavy. Ugh, writing a hoverboard. Let's say you learn how to write a hoverboard. Does that mean once you learn how to write a hoverboard, you will never fall or crash into a wall again? No. But what it means is after you learn how to write a hoverboard for a while, uh, you're not going to fall as hard or as often, and you're going to be able to do a lot more cooler things on your hoverboard, like do little spins and, you know, maybe go to music or whatever people do on hoverboards, or maybe go downstairs. I don't even, do not try this at home. Okay, parents, I did not tell your child to drive a hoverboard downstairs. As cool as that would be, uh, I'm not going to try it because uh, I can't even hardly do it at all. Um, but my point is, is um, uh, we still sin even as disciples, even as Christians, but as we learn to walk with Jesus and more and more fruit develops in our life over time, uh, more and more good fruit comes out, less bad fruit comes out, uh, less bad words, less bad thoughts, less bad actions, and more good stuff uh, comes out. So it's a process. It takes time, okay? So to demonstrate this whole thing of discipleship, I can't believe I'm going to do this. This could go really bad. I'm going to turn on the hoverboard. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's mad at me. Let's turn it off. There we go. I'm going to turn on the hoverboard again on the ground. And I'm going to show you discipleship in action. Here we go. It's going to be really bad. Woo! I'm a disciple. I'm a disciple. Woo! Ah! Okay. I fell off. Fortunately, I didn't go crazy falling off here. But that's the idea here is I'm just a beginner in my hoverboard discipleship and you might just be a beginner in your discipleship of jesus but over time you will learn how to do cool tricks and not fall as hard or as often i will have to spend a lot of time on the hoverboard with kate or lizzie teaching me how to do it because i'm not very good at hoverboarding just yet so uh i think that's it for today but remember a christian is someone who knows god and is known by god we Become a Christian by understanding the message, Jesus died as my substitute, and then by turning our lives around to let him be our boss and putting our trust in him. And uh, then you can tell if someone is a Christian by the good fruit that develops in their life. Uh, that's it. Next week we will talk about who God is, what he is like, and that might take a week or two. Uh, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.